Welcome everybody. Uh, today I'm going to show you if you if you got a lot of wood around the house like I did, and you don't want to pay three dollars a gallon for propane. I just put a wood stove in, wood furnace, and I'll show you a little bit about it if you if you think about doing it around the house for yourself to give you a little heads up on what I've had to do. It took me about. I guess about three months of hard work, what time I wasn't working on my spare time and stuff to get it going. But anyway, I'll show you a little bit about it. Since I had so much wood laying around the house and trees dying, I had to cut up. I thought I would just uh, start using it instead of wasting it. So, you can see I've got all the wood stored up here. I cut it and got a log splitter, split it up stack it. Now, what you save in money, you spend in labor. Believe me. But it's well worth it if you've got the time to fool with it. Anyway, I'm running the house on a uh, split furnace propane air conditioner and uh, furnace is inside and it does well. It does real good. But, they like the propane. So, I went from uh, using three 500 gallon tanks maybe four a year down to one by using this stove so the only thing that i use really in propane now is when i'm not having to use the furnace when it's mild i'll use the furnace and save the wood but when it gets down below 35 degrees i'll just run the furnace just to save on propane from running that furnace all the time but uh Without talking too much, I'll show you this stove here a little bit. Well, you can see this is an England stove furnace. It's a wood furnace. It's not just a fireplace insert or nothing like that. So you could put this in your basement if you had a chimney to hook to or whatever. It's got a blower with it. And what it is, it's a uh, 3,000 square foot heating capacity of a house. So, but... It don't blow like a furnace. It's just 850 CFM, that's cubic feet per minute. Where a furnace is probably 1,500 cubic feet per minute blower. Well, if that blowed like this, this would run you out of the house. You'd be opening the windows, believe me. So it's just a constant little slow, even blow all the time. And it's just enough to keep the house warm. So, like I said, it's an England stove. It can hold 26 inch long logs or wood pieces. And uh, let's sit down here and we'll show it to you. bottom for your air vents but <clears throat> that really gets it hot right there and get it going you don't want to ever walk away from a stove with it wide open on the bottom because really it starts really going at it but anyway there's where you load your wood this one here this specific this specific model has a glass front on it where you can see how it's burning and stuff instead of haven't opened the door so much. And you've got a, a damper down here to close off your airflow. But, <clears throat> but a furnace is not like a open stove or a, a, a chimney, just a fire. This really runs when it's really smothered down in just embers to keep it running. So the only drawback on these kind of stoves is they put off a lot of soot. So once a month, you have to clean that chimney out. If you don't, it'll clog up so bad it can't breathe and it won't burn right. So every four to six weeks tops, you've got to clean your chimney out. And I take my pipes apart and clean them. You can see I've got gauges on them. If you run the stove too hot or too cold, a six inch pipe on the blue output 
and you can see you've got gauges over here I just a little bit overkill but I don't want to get it too hot of course I'm going into a cement block wall so I'm not in danger of catching nothing on par if it did get too hot and back here is the blower controls I even put on a uh, back up a backup auxiliary fan in case the big blower goes out on it you could turn the auxiliary on to get you by in cold weather so this thing has saved me a few times and what I'm saying the power or electricity is going off because of a snowstorm or tree on a line somewhere no electricity it only takes six amps to run it probably four to six so I just took a little bitty generator to it just enough to keep the furnace going to keep the house warm well you can't do that with a big your big furnace you got to have some power but anyway the output you see the pipes come in right here out of the house I tied this into the house and what this does it comes out of the house duct work out of the house right there comes out of the house it's sucked into the stove by the draw of the fan. It goes in down here, eight inch, and it comes out right here, goes across the stove, across the stove here where it heats. And the heat is picked up here and goes out on an eight inch pipe with blower pushing it. It goes into the house. And I'll show you that here in just a few minutes. So. We'll move around here. But while I'm on it here, the only thing about this stove is it's made to sit like in a basement or something, and it don't have this right here. I'm kicking a shroud around it. And what I mean a shroud is it goes around your, your fan motor. If you didn't have that, it would just kick, it would just suck in outside air and push the heat out. Well, you don't want to do that. I'm in a controlled environment, so I pull out what heat I got in my house, like your furnace or air conditioner would, and recirculate it, and just keep warming it up and warming it up. So I had to build this little box around it. So, and you see I've got the thermostat control. There's a thermostat for the stove right there. Yeah, like I said, it's been a real good been a real good outfit. I've had it running now for 11 years. So I'm going to show you the chimney. Here at the back of the house, I had to build a chimney. I didn't have one. But you could see, I got it about seven or eight foot above the top of the house to get the smoke pulled away. But it's been pretty good. The only thing is, it's, a, it's an eight inch blue chimney inside with that eight inch chimney flue block around it. it I wish it was 12 inch or better but uh, and you can see I put a clean out door on the end of it here on the bottom of it so you have to clean this chimney out and as you can see the moisture in the bottom of it what happens especially if you don't burn real good dry wood or it even does it with dry wood but the problem I've been having is uh it's not really a problem but as that wood burns it turns into steam or well, if that wood's a bit damp or wet it will turn into steam and it'll go up this chimney but the chimney is so tall see that it cools back off real quick before it comes out and when it does that it turns the steam turns back into a vapor and water and it runs back down the chimney and drains out right here and if you don't keep that unstopped, especially when it's really, really, really cold, that will freeze up and that water will just back up. The level will just back up here and freeze solid and it'll, it'll bust your block and everything if you don't keep that. You gotta keep it draining. So, it's just, I'm just telling you little shortcuts to help you if you do this. So we're gonna move on. Okay, we're in the, we're in the house now where the uh, where the pipes come in from the outside on the stove. It's kind of a really 
you know, I wish it was a little more open, but this is the place I've got. You can see the two pipes come in back here. Right here's the uh, intake, and the one right behind it is the exhaust, the output that goes back into the house. So what I've done is I just tied into my return right here, the big return that comes down in your house for your air conditioner or your just your heat pump ductwork, tied in right there, and then it goes out back around through there to the stove and it comes out of the stove back there behind it and it comes in and ties right there on the output of your furnace duct work. So, now, when I've done this, to keep it from short circuiting, you'll see in the drawing I'll add to it. But I put a little damper inside here and it's just a little pipe when it ain't when the maid furnace ain't running, the thing will close. Now he'll cut, he'll cut this off across through here where the, where, where the air can't short circuit. So it ain't got no choice but to come out of the house, come out of the house, and then come back into the house. Now, when the main furnace is running and you ain't running your stove, that will force this open. And it, it just don't even go towards that stove. And I put uh, in here where they tie in, I put little butterfly valves in here that's spring loaded. So when there ain't no wire flowing, they would just close off. One on the output and one on the input. But uh, it's worked real well. Like I said, I've had it for 11 seasons now, so. Anyway, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll give you some diagrams here. I hope this helps you if you ever want to do something like that. Now, it is kind of a little aggravating, tedious work and time consuming, but it's well worth it if you've got the time and to put in it and a little bit of an investment. I believe chimney, getting a chimney flue built, I had to have somebody do that for me. Get that built and buying the stove buying all the duct work and doing the rest of the stuff myself is I probably got about $3,000 in it. And that was 11 years ago. So what's it now? 3,500 to 4,000? But uh, been well worth it to me because I went from paying $2,000 a year in propane down to about five or $600. So it's paid for itself many times over so far. So I thought I'd share this with you. But anyway, I'll show you some, uh, I'll add in here in some uh, diagrams of how I've done it.